The rose line is often quoted, The man who goes each day to the village to hear the latest news has not heard from himself in a long time. It's as if he thought solitude were a rare condition avoided by most people. But the contrary is true. The man who hears only from himself most of the time needs to get in touch with the village. Even Henry knew that. He didn't go very far, wasn't gone very long, and historians have proved that Thoreau walked the two miles into Concord almost every day, and he welcomed visitors at his pond. Henry Thoreau was lonely, and that's why he finally moved back to town. Solitude is our norm, and it's often as painful as it is pleasurable, especially if you are depressed or afraid or anguished or confused. Nobody is excluded from feeling left out. The solution to aloneness is not more solitude, but companionship and community, and to make inevitable solitude work in your favor. If you want meaningful solitude, it's not far away, actually. Retreating to the woods alone isn't required. In shutting off phones, TV, newspapers, radio, and email, and spending a day inside by myself without background distractions, I often hear from myself. Sometimes what I hear is good news, but not always. Solitude is hardly guaranteed bliss. On stage, in the theater of my head, is a noisy company of characters with contradictory opinions and quarrelsome tendencies. One is never really alone because the play in one's brain is ongoing and the clamor can be tiresome whether you're asleep or awake. Who's in charge in there in the meat? I often wonder. In another sense, when I am most alone, I am not alone, alone. For example, in just an hour's walk this morning, I counted 73 people out by themselves, looking at the news of the day around them, thinking, hearing from themselves, running, walking a dog, washing a car, or waiting for a bus. Some were out watering their flowers or tending their gardens, absorbed in their own inner process. We smiled, nodded, and acknowledged each other. And sometimes, sometimes that is enough. Solitude is not the same as loneliness. Solitude is a solitary boat floating in a sea of possible companions. Respect for mutual solitude is a requirement of society. That's why Thoreau published Walden, to transcend solitude, to be alone but not lonely. He didn't keep what he thought to himself. He wrote it down, addressed it to other people in his books. And that's why I write all these words to you, as a way of bringing the small boat of my life within speaking distance of yours. Hello, 